So here's the motor cleaned up a bit. All I did was gently clean the case. And if you look at part three, you can see how dirty that thing really was. I blew out the insides with compressed air. I hit it with some electrical contact cleaner and I sanded the inside where the armature spins. And I gotta tell you, I was really tempted to maybe actually paint this thing. Here's what's left of the label, which is just too original not to leave. Now, the cleaned up covers, I'm tempted to paint them black. However, new black covers on the old motor are gonna look funky. So I'll probably clean these up a little bit more and then just clear coat them. So right now, my challenge is this kind of thing, right? That's a mess. I don't like this. These are the result of somebody going in and putting a three prong cord on this, which I respect. However, they made a mess of it. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, clean up these wires, put a little heat shrink tubing on the end of these and just get it so that it looks decent. So that's the next step. So when you find yourself cleaning up something like this armature, much easier to do if it's spinning, so I'm not the first one to do this, but if you chuck it up in a drill, be careful. actually does a pretty good job. So step one of the motor reassembly is to get the new bearings in place. Now one bearing presses into the bottom half of the motor casing. The other bearing goes onto the shaft right here. This is an interference fit. It's a little bit tight. I could press that on there, but I don't have a press. I could bang it on there with a deep socket. I don't want to do that. Ideally, you heat up a bearing or you freeze a bearing when you need it to fit. So we're going to try heating this thing up and we're going to heat it up in the microwave. Now, <laughs> I saw a video on this. Uh, I've never tried it and uh, I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm going to soak this rag in water. I'm going to wrap that bearing up. I'm going to drop it in the microwave. I'm going to pay really close attention to it and we'll see what happens. All right, three minutes this time. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna to try to press it on there. The key is that thing has gotta be about 200 degrees. The metal expands, I think, a little bit for every 100 degrees. 200 would be hot enough. You can put metal in the, micro in the microwave if you wrap it up in water. This definitely works. You can see no sparks. And you don't have to sneak it by your wife because my wife is here filming, right? Yep. Okay. All right, we're about to come out. Food is done. Put my gloves on because the rag gets pretty hot. Jeez. Nice and steamy. There you go, one cooked bearing. Let's check the temperature of that sucker. It's still 160 degrees. I don't know if that's hot enough. Nope. All right, I'm not doing any more in the microwave. You can heat up a bearing that way. I don't know how long it takes my microwave to get it to 200. So I'm just gonna tap this thing on. I'm gonna go try it, tap it on instead. All right, so here we are back in the shop. Sorry for the noise from the heater, but it's cold today. So the microwave thing was interesting in that I learned that you can put metal in the microwave and have it not explode. However, after three minutes, I couldn't get this hot enough 
to actually make any difference. So I poked around and uh, found the spark plug socket that's the right diameter and uh, big enough to just allow me to tap this thing in. So we're going to do it this way. I'm going to get myself a uh, better mallet and we'll give it a shot. So the spark plug socket, as I started to get down to the lip of the shaft here, actually was getting hung up. So I found a piece of pipe that I cut years ago to use as a valve spring installer. And this is exactly the right size. And with this being the right size, tap that on there and now we're good to go. Here's the electric motor box. Actually, this is the switch box took the switch out. Need to get a new strain relief. The old one is just shot. I don't think it's original anyway. This is a little rough. I'm gonna hit it with a uh, with a brass brush. And see how much it cleans up. This I might actually have to paint as much as I hate to do that. But let's see what happens if we hit it with the Dremel. Who knows, might end up working well. And here's this part after cleaning it up. One side was a little bit rougher, but it's not bad. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the approach of just leaving this the way it is so that it goes with the rest of the machine. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of clear so that it doesn't, it doesn't rust again. But. All right, here we are back inside. And uh, I took this apart again. On some other machines that I've seen, this entire piece is, is one thing. Mine is two, and when I put it back to, I didn't pay close enough attention when I took it apart. You can see I had these screws going down through the top into these, which are threaded, and then the bosses underneath are not tapped. So these two up in the front are tapped, these ones aren't. And I was like, what the heck is going on there? So put it back together that way. And then I had these two screws left and I couldn't figure out where they go. And then I realized they come in from the front, run up through there and then fasten. Very strange way to hold it together. I'm not quite sure why it works that way, but I'm gonna put it back together now. All right, so here's this reassembled the right way. Those long screws come in from the outside come up through the top of the motor casting and then thread into these threaded standoffs and then the whole thing is together. And now that I put it back together, I remember when I took it apart, I took those two screws out first. When I got into it, I was like, geez, why are there any, why are there no screws in these holes? Well, that explains that. Lesson learned, take more pictures when you take things apart, Chris. So I make mistakes just like everybody else. This bearing I just pulled off and put back on because I had that little flange sticking out. And in reality, it needs to stick in. When I put it back together, the fins hit the case the other way. So let's see what happens this time. So here's what I'm gonna file in the category of, <laughs> I make mistakes just like everybody else. Motor together, working, I'm starting to just get ready to put it back on the machine in what to my wondering eyes should appear, but two more washers. So trying to find a parts diagram for this thing is maddening. However, on this end, I've got felt washer, flat washer, spring, spring washer bearing. On this end, I've just got the bearing. So I'm guessing since there was no felt washer in there, it's gotta be flat washer, spring washer, bearing on that side too. There's a million different variations of this motor. So I'm gonna take it back apart and see if they go in there. And here we are opened up again. I kind of got to thinking, I popped the back off and those washers didn't fit on there. So I popped the front off too. And the reason I popped the front off was 
if you remember from the earlier video, I had this bearing on with the extended side facing the wrong direction. I did the same thing here. And the other mistake that I made here, we talked about these are interference fit. I had that bearing in the bell, that's no good. And as you can see, it's not where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna pop that back off, spin it around the right way, and then try to figure out the right order for these washers. Better to do these things now than to get it all back together and have to do it later. Now you've gotta take the bearing off in order to actually get the armature out because this is behind the bearing. So I can't just press the bearing onto the shaft. I have to have this over the shaft and then press the bearing in. So while I've got it out, I'm just gonna clean it up one more time. I've got it in my homemade little, <laughs> my drill to spin it. I'm gonna put some sandpaper on there and clean that thing up. And I cleaned it up once already, but as a result of trying to bang it together, it's a little bit scratchy, so I wanna make sure it's good. gotta love that trick. And here we are two minutes later. Now the bearing is where it's supposed to be on the shaft. The part of the bearing that's proud is where it's supposed to be. And I just use a piece of pipe in this case to tap that on there. This is the same diameter as the inner race and it just slid right on. This is actually my valve spring removal tool that I use on my motorcycles. In any case, all I've got to do now is put it back in there, solder that wire on, and start putting it back together. So if you're here because you're putting one of these motors back together, a couple of interesting points. So press that bearing on there. You can see it now just about ready to go in. I re-soldered the wire back to that centrifugal switch and then this is really the definition of the word ridiculous so the bottom half of this plate again is held in with these two screws so you have to get everything all ready to go in there then fish those two screws in from the front and then push all of this back together so behind the bearing I've got the felt washer followed by the flat washer, followed by the spring washer. On the other side, there's nothing. And I have determined that those other two washers are not part of the motor. And if you go back and you look at one of the earlier videos, in fact, if you look at where I have the motor on the bench and I'm getting ready to take it apart, those two washers are sitting there long before I got into this, and lo and behold, they actually go on the bottom of the table. So we'll put them back where they belong. Let's try to get this thing back buttoned up again. And here we are, all back together. Feels nice. Plugged in. I am gonna call that good to go. So let's get this thing back on the drill press. So this is annoying. The new belt that I bought is much bigger than the belt that was on there. Here we are, machine on the motor. I'm gonna put the old belt back on just so that I can run this thing. And then I'm gonna figure out what belt I actually need. So here's everything that we actually had to replace over the course of the project. So this is the original pulley from the top of the spindle. Uh, 
that was really stuck on there. It's really difficult for me to get it off. And of course it broke into a million pieces as I fought with it to remove it. A little gear drive in there broke as well. The bearing that works with it is notchy and main part of the problems with this drill press. These are the two spindle bearings that don't even spin. This is the cover plate that goes along with that, the screws. And finally, from the, uh, from the belt tensioning bolts, this is the one that was a little bit screwed up. If you go back into, I think, part two, I retapped that hole and uh, just put a new bolt in there instead of chasing that one out. Here we are again, it's been fun. Can't wait to get a new belt on there and actually start to use this machine. And that's really all there is to it. And finally, here we are. I'd call it 100% done, except for that wonky old belt that I had to put back on there. So I didn't want to wait and have to make the final video after I buy another belt. So this is it. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna start it up. Runs well. One new belt and project is complete. Thanks for watching everybody. The question is, what do we do next? You can see I'm upstairs in my workshop at the moment. Got some of my old race bikes up here. Stuff that I, that I don't touch very often. And I've decided that that Honda QA50 behind me is gonna be my next project. Uh, if you watch my Honda mini bike video, you'll see the story behind that bike and why it means so much to me. So we're gonna do that one next get it cleaned up and on display downstairs. So thanks for watching.